One minute ago, the ground beneath Puzzioli shook violently for the fourth time today. Walls cracked, glass shattered. Families ran into the streets clutching children and phones, their faces tight with fear they have carried for decades. This is Rione Terra, the ancient heart of a city built on top of a sleeping giant. Fifty-five years after authorities forced everyone out, promising safety and certainty, the volcano has spoken again. And this time, the warnings are louder than ever before. The earthquakes are not slowing down. They are accelerating. Why is the earth rising faster now than during the crisis that emptied an entire neighborhood in 1970? What is happening three kilometers beneath the cobblestone streets that scientists failed to predict? And if the ground keeps climbing at its current pace, what comes next for the half million people living directly above one of Europe's most dangerous volcanic systems? Rione Terra sits on a promontory overlooking the Bay of Naples. Pastel buildings line narrow alleys. Stone walls date back centuries. From the cathedral balconies, you can see the blue sweep of the Tyrrhenian Sea and the volcanic islands beyond. It looks peaceful, timeless, but every structure here is empty. Doors are sealed. Windows are dark. Only occasional workers move through the streets, restoring ruins for tourists who will never live here. This is a ghost town by government decree. On March 2, 1970, army trucks rolled through these streets. Soldiers pounded on doors. Families were given minutes to gather belongings before being forced out, some against their will. The ground had been rising seven centimeters per month. Scientists warned an eruption was imminent. Authorities declared Rione Terra uninhabitable and took ownership of every building. Residents were moved to shelters and told to wait. The eruption never came. For decades, conspiracy theories replaced panic. Some believed it was a land grab disguised as safety. Others pointed out the bishop was allowed to stay. Graffiti appeared on sealed walls accusing authorities of wanting the paradise for themselves. But the volcano was not finished. It was only resting. The Campi Flagre caldera stretches eight miles across the landscape west of Naples. This is not a mountain with a smoking peak. Instead, the caldera sprawls beneath neighborhoods, schools, ancient ruins, and busy harbors. Its rim is barely visible to anyone except geologists. More than half a million people live directly above this volcanic giant in what officials call the Red Zone. Beyond that, over six million residents of the greater Naples region work and raise families within reach of its power. The caldera formed 15,000 years ago, an eruption so massive it emptied underground magma chambers and left the ground above unsupported. The earth collapsed inward, creating a crater wider than Manhattan, over time, the landscape filled with towns and farmland until the original scar almost disappeared, but the volcano never stopped breathing. Since that ancient collapse, at least 70 eruptions have broken through the surface. Each one opened new vents, domes, or steaming fields. The most recent eruption occurred in 1538, building Monte Nuovo in just days. Parish records describe darkness at noon, choking ash, and ground shaking so violently homes split open. For weeks, the air was thick with sulfur. Even centuries after the last eruption, the land has not settled. The caldera floor rises and falls in slow, powerful pulses, a phenomenon called bradycism. These movements destroyed roads, warped buildings, and forced entire neighborhoods to evacuate. The cycle repeated in 1969 through 1972, the ground rose 1.7 meters. Thousands of small earthquakes rattled the region. Rioni Terra was evacuated and never repopulated. Then came 1982 through 1984, another 1.8 meters of uplift. Intense seismicity. The entire town of Puzzioli, 40,000 people, was forced to leave. After each crisis, the ground subsided. Life returned to a tense normal. Authorities promised monitoring would catch the next event early. But the current crisis is different. In 2005, the ground began rising again. This time, the uplift has lasted 20 years and shows no sign of stopping. 
By June 2025, the maximum uplift at Rioni Terra reached 148 centimeters, with 29.5 centimeters added since January 2024 alone. The rate of rise fluctuates wildly. From August 2024 through January 2025, the ground climbed 10 millimeters per month. In late February, it jumped to 15 millimeters. By March, it surged to 30 millimeters. In November 2025, monitoring stations recorded 25 millimeters per month, a 70% increase from earlier in the year. The seismicity has intensified beyond anything in the historical record. Since 2018, earthquake frequency has climbed steadily. Between 2022 and mid-2025, more than 50,000 tremors were recorded. Most are shallow, less than 3 kilometers deep, typical of Brady seismic activity caused by rising fluids and gases but the magnitudes are growing. On September 27, 2023, a magnitude 4.2 earthquake struck the coast. On May 20, 2024, a magnitude 4.4 event damaged buildings and forced evacuation of dozens of structures west of the epicenter. On June 30, 2025, a magnitude 4.6 earthquake hit, the largest ever instrumentally recorded at Campi Flagre. What came next shocked even the scientists. On March 13, 2025, at 1.25 a.m., another magnitude 4.4 earthquake jolted the coast near Puzzioli. It triggered a seismic swarm with 44 events in rapid succession. The tremors were felt across Naples. Walls cracked in residential neighborhoods. Families moved mattresses away from exterior walls, trying to find safe corners in their own homes. INGV's Vesuvius Observatory declared the swarm over 12 hours later, but an hour after that, a magnitude 3.5 earthquake struck. The volcano, as one scientist noted, is stronger than logic. Scientists have identified the source of the accelerating crisis. Recent studies using seismic tomography and gas monitoring revealed a shallow gas-rich zone only 2 to 4 kilometers beneath the surface, much closer than previous estimates. The shallow crustal layer acts as a buffer where pressurized fluids and magmatic gases accumulate. The layer is more fragile than expected. When pressure builds, gases force their way through weak points in the cap rock. The system is primed for catastrophic failure even without large obvious ascent of magma. At the Solfaterra Pisciarelli fumarole field, temperatures have surged beyond anything in modern monitoring. Automated sensors now register vent temperatures as high as 128 degrees Celsius, compared to 110 a decade ago. Carbon dioxide emissions from this single vent system have more than doubled since 2018. What was once 1,500 tons per day now surges past 4,000 tons daily. Drone measurements recorded temperatures above 140 degrees in the Pisciarelli area, where the soil is highly fractured and unstable. But the ground had one more secret. Inside abandoned buildings near the fumaroles, walls and floors have transformed. Every surface is coated in a thick, crusty layer of yellow and white minerals, sulfur, silica, and iron fused by volcanic heat. Original paint and concrete are barely visible beneath the deposits. In some rooms, the buildup is so dense it blurs the corners between wall and floor. Municipal records show families lived in these structures as recently as 2016. Complaints began with strange warmth in the floors, then salty streaks along baseboards. By 2018, thermal cameras recorded floor temperatures near 50 degrees Celsius. Residents reported dizzy spells and burning sensations on their feet. Civil protection teams measured carbon dioxide levels at 9,000 parts per million, far above safe limits. The building was declared uninhabitable. Doors and windows were sealed. But the volcano continued its work. Fumarolic gas found new pathways, punching through cracks and utility conduits, leaving behind fresh crust with every pulse of steam. The evidence inside these rooms is as important as any seismograph. It is the volcano's message, written in stone and sulfur. The threat is no longer hidden. Maria Russo lives four blocks from the Pisciarelli fumaroles. At night, she opens windows to let acidic air escape, then checks walls for blistered paint or fresh mineral streaks. Her youngest son sleeps with a fan because the outer wall radiates heat like a stovetop. Each morning, the family inspects the living room. Some days, yellow ooze has crept another inch up from the floorboards. 
The air smells sharp and metallic, especially after rain when gases push harder through cracks. Last winter alone, repairs cost more than 6,000 euros. Money spent on heat-resistant paint, makeshift ventilation, and repeated sealing of fissures that always reopen. Insurance companies refuse coverage, citing volcano exclusion clauses. Selling is not an option. Property values have plummeted. Few buyers will risk a home in the shadow of fumaroles. Maria's grandfather insists on staying. We watch from the balcony as steam curls up in the street, she says. And every morning, we check if the paint is blistering. The volcano has invaded their home, their routines, and their sense of safety. Civil protection officials face a crisis that outpaces their ability to respond. The network of seismic and gas sensors meant to track Campi Flagre's unrest has developed dangerous blind spots. In early 2024, several monitoring stations around Solfaterra went offline for weeks. Technicians blame geothermal damage and budget shortfalls. Every extra week offline is a gamble with critical data gaps during periods of rapid change. While sensors struggled, the ground delivered unmistakable warnings. On October 12, 2024, a swarm of shallow earthquakes cracked open via Napoli, the main artery through Pozzuoli. Shops and schools shut down. Emergency crews cordoned off leaking gas zones. Workers patched the road, but new steaming vents burst through asphalt by morning. It was as if the earth decided repairs were pointless. In 2025, researchers using artificial intelligence mapped thousands of microquakes that standard networks missed. These swarms cluster along a newly identified ring fault encircling the caldera. The discovery quadrupled the number of detected earthquakes from 12,000 to over 54,000. And the signs were already spreading. The data revealed two major faults converging beneath Pizzuoli, structures that suggest earthquakes in the magnitude 5 range are not out of the question. City budgets are drained. Repairs are temporary. Officials quietly admit they cannot stop the volcano, only manage it. The acceleration is measured not just in data, but in broken streets and sleepless nights. The caldera's population density is among the highest of any volcanic hazard zone on Earth. Emergency planners have mapped evacuation routes and run drills, but the reality is stark. The sheer number of people, the tangle of roads, and unpredictability make rapid escape almost impossible. Scientists are divided on what comes next. Some researchers believe the current unrest will follow previous patterns. Prolonged uplift, intense seismicity, then gradual subsidence without eruption. INGV monitoring shows no seismic signals indicating magma movement towards the surface. Geochemical parameters remain consistent with long-term trends. The Pisciarelli fumaroles records an average temperature around 94 degrees Celsius, elevated but stable. What is fueling this crisis and who is truly at risk now? Others warn the system has entered uncharted territory. Studies published in Nature Communications and AGU Advances identify fault activation beneath Pozzuoli, not just elastic deformation. The crust is fracturing under relentless pressure. Very long period seismic signals indicate a fissure-like structure at 3.5 kilometers depth, connecting the magma reservoir with surface fumaroles. The resonance frequency has remained stable, suggesting the overlying cap rock is still intact. But if pressure continues building, catastrophic failure could occur with little warning. The implications are clear. Fabio Florindo, president of INGV, called Campi Flagre a national emergency. The Astroniag Nano area is the most critical. While eruption remains unlikely in the short term, repeated earthquakes around magnitude 4 or higher could collapse structures across densely populated neighborhoods. Building codes were not designed for shallow volcanic earthquakes. Even moderate magnitudes produce ground shaking intense enough to exceed design limits. Seismic risk studies warn that existing buildings at Rioni Terra face fatality rates far higher than structures built to modern standards. But this was only the first warning. Long-term projections suggest the potential for future eruption. Studies of the 1538 event show precursory phenomena included months of intense ground uplift and seismicity before magma finally reached the surface. Historical records describe uplift reaching 5 to 6 meters above sea level in the Rione Terra area before the eruption that built Monte Nuovo. The current uplift has already exceeded 1.4 meters since 2005. If accumulation continues at the accelerated pace recorded in 2025, thresholds for critical instability could be reached within years. 
Scientists cannot predict if or when a major eruption might occur. What remains unknown is the full timeline and ultimate extent of this crisis. Researchers have uncovered consistent patterns in seismic sequences preceding major earthquakes. The preparatory phase shows strong correlation between deformation rates, cumulative seismic moment, and earthquake magnitudes. This offers hope for refined hazard assessment, but predicting the location, magnitude, and date of the next major event remains beyond current capabilities. The shallow depth of compiflagrary earthquakes and peculiar attenuation patterns mean even moderate tremors can cause damage disproportionate to their size. Over 500,000 people live directly atop the compiflagrary caldera. Recent months confirmed sharp rises in vent temperatures and gas emissions. Mineral deposits now encasing walls and floors in buildings near Solfatara prove volcanic materials are invading human spaces. New studies revealed magma is far closer to the surface than once believed, challenging earlier hazard models. Many monitoring stations suffered outages during critical periods. The accelerating pattern of microquakes and unstoppable invasion of volcanic heat into homes and streets are documented facts. The evidence is clear. Compiflagrari is not dormant. Ancient does not mean safe. The forces that shaped this caldera still move beneath the surface, ready to break through again. Rione Terra remains empty, a monument to a crisis that never fully resolved. Its cathedral has been restored, tours guide visitors through underground Roman ruins, but residents will never return. Authorities want population density kept to minimum in case of earthquakes or eruptions. Tourists are easier to evacuate than stable residents. The ghost town stands as warning and promise. 55 years after soldiers forced families from their homes, the ground is rising faster than it did in 1970. Earthquakes are stronger and more frequent than during the 1982 to 1984 crisis that emptied all of Potswali. Monitoring networks struggle to keep pace. Buildings crack under relentless pressure from below. Families sleep in hallways away from walls that radiate volcanic heat. Scientists map new faults and discover hidden structures they missed for decades. Civil protection budgets drain on temporary repairs that vanish overnight. And still, the ground rises. The volcano has no memory of promises made or plans abandoned. It operates on timescales beyond human patience, answering to forces geologists can measure but not control. What scientists know is that uplift and seismicity continue. What remains unknown is whether the cap rock will hold, whether magma will stall or ascend, whether the next earthquake will be magnitude 4 or magnitude 5. The difference could be measured in collapsed buildings and lives lost. If Compiflagrari follows the pattern of 1538, what will authorities do when uplift reaches 4 meters? When will they order evacuation of Pozzuoli's 75,000 residents? And where will half a million people go if the caldera decides, after nearly five centuries of silence, that it is time to erupt again?